Hola hola guys, welcome back to another video and in this one we'll be trying to solve second order homogeneous and in homogeneous difference equation and I've already presented some nice definition and examples on my PowerPoint and this video. Well, let's jump straight into it guys. So what do we have here? First things first, let's try and understand what the heck is a second order difference equation and how we apply it and how we even solve it. So what I defined there is a um, four key variables we have pt qt rt and ft these are just functions in terms of t where in this case pt qt rt are going to be constants this is going to be a linear example okay so i should call this a linear difference homogeneous in own and in homogeneous equations well and uh, what do we have here we have yt plus 2 yt plus 1 and yt these terms are just simply um the second uh, this all of this is just simply the second order of yt just goes up to the second order and what are we concerned about well what we're really concerned about is the left hand side which is the homogeneous part is homogeneous if we assume that the equation equals zero and this is how we aim to solve one part of the solution which is known as the complementary solution and of course we also have the right hand side which is the inhomogeneous part and we'll get to this part a little later okay so now let's let's move on so what does the general solution of this equation actually look like okay so what form does it even take well we can see that it splits into two parts the first part which is the complementary part and the second part which was the right hand side which i said we'll get to be later and this is known as the particular part well let's jump straight into an example okay guys so the first example is this Suppose we let yt plus 2 minus 4yt plus 1 plus 4yt equal t. So we've got the homogeneous part on the left side if equals 0 and the inhomogeneous part which includes the t. So we all we do now is set the left hand side to equal to 0. And for the homogeneous part, well, in this part, we should we should take note that this is actually known as a characteristic equation. Okay, well, the character it's actually the characteristic equation takes this form as there we go. What we see in screen m squared minus four m plus four, where each term from the second order represents the m squared. The first order with the coefficient minus four is m, and just the y t which has which is you can think of as plus zero and m to the power zero is just four. Okay, now we just have what we have is just a nice, beautiful quadratic equation. Okay, so let's factorize this. What do we get? So we can see that we should obtain m minus two to the power two. So we should get, and how do we know is this? Well, just in case you do, you guys don't know how we got this, to get four we need two times two, and to add four is two plus two, or in this case minus two minus two. Hence why we have something known as repeated roots for m. Okay. So what do we do with this now? Well, with the characteristic equation, in other words, the homogeneous part, this is how the so-called complementary solution looks like. It takes the form of A times our first solution, M1, in this case, because it's repeat, they're both the same, to the power T plus BT, M2 to the power T. In this case, we stick in a T next to B because it's repeated roots. However, there are other cases. Okay, so yeah, let me just so substitute in 2t and we get this. Great. But anyway, if, these are the other cases. If we had real roots or complex roots, then this story would obviously be a bit different. We will consider different things. In particular, if we had the real roots, if we had real roots, in other words, two different solutions for m, the complementary part would equal, in this case, the same thing except there's no t. Okay, likewise, if we had complex roots, in other words, imaginary roots, you know, we had a square root and we had a nice, well, a horrible negative number inside, somehow we'll be dealing with cosines and sines, okay? Again, you, you should thank Euler for this, or Euler, he really helped us out here. And yeah, so this looks like the real root, except we have cos and sine attached, okay? So any, but anyway, in this, for this particular case, we have the repeated roots, okay? Let's move on. So now... Now that we complete, now that we completed the complementary part, how about we go and tackle the particular part of the equation? In other words, the right hand side. Okay, so have a look. So the particular part was over there t. What do we do? Well, first things first. Um, we need to know how to solve this equation. We solve it by considering this inhomogeneous table. What does this table tell us? Well, as you see, on the because we because we're dealing with t, we should consider the second row, the kt. In other words, but in general, let's just talk about this. 
if our if on the right hand side we had a constant k then we can assume that our general solution is also going to be in the form of a constant if it's in the form of a constant times t or basically in, in a polynomial order of 1t then our solution should be a constant t plus a different constant likewise t squared it goes up to t squared so it becomes as you can see some sort of uh, polynomial up to power n okay and of course ends with a constant however if we had a sine or cosine and the reason why the particular looks like that kind of solution is because if we were to differentiate sine, we would get a cycle. It will become cosine, and differentiating cosine would be negative sine. Differentiating negative sine it will give you negative cos. And differentiating negative cos will take you back to sine. So in other words, you get a cycle. This is why we have two cases, and we need to match coefficients here. And lastly, we have k and a constant to the power t. And this, of course, will be some new constant with the same you know entered power t anyway our case we're dealing with kt okay so there you go circled nice blue circle and because that's a particular case our solution to that would be in a case of a constant t plus another constant okay let's go let's jump straight to it so what does this mean then okay so now this means that finding a particular solution is going to take the form of this. Okay, so our, our particular solu solution is going to be equal to a constant we call C1 times T plus C0. And now, what do we do with this? Well, we just smash this back into our YT uh, equation that involves YT, YT plus 1 and YT plus 2. Well, this one really. Okay, so, but... Of course, we also need to find y t plus 1, t plus 2. And here we are. We just replace the values, t and t plus 1. And there we have it. So now, replacing, um, uh, our ver uh, replacing all these terms into the equation, just substituting back in, we should get this. Okay? This now becomes this. Okay? So take your time with this and um, make sure you get it correct. Maybe I did it wrong, but hopefully it's okay. Hopefully it's okay. So now, at this point, we want to match coefficients with left hand and right hand side. Okay, so the left hand side is this, and other words, but I think before we do this, how about we um, simplify this before we start matching coefficients? Okay, so yeah, there we are. So here's our coefficients. So we get c0 minus 2c1 plus c1t equals t. Now you can see that left hand side matches with what exactly? Well, the coefficient, the constants in this case would be C0 plus 2C1. And on the right-hand side, there's obviously no constant, so that would equal to 0. Now, in terms of order T, there's only C1 attached to it. And on the right side, think of T as just 1 times T, hence it's just 1. Therefore, we have our two sets of simultaneous equations. C0 minus 2C1 equals 0 and C1 equals 1. Now, solving this, we already know C1 equals 1. Substituting back to the first equation is going to yield us with C0 equals 2. Okay? And believe it or not, guys, this is pretty much the end. So, from this point, we're substituting this back into our particular solution will finally give us T plus 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, as, as I should say, Alhamdulillah. Okay. Hence, our final solution to this equation here. So, uh, and this is our enti in the entire deal, okay, this is the complementary plus particular. It's finally going to yield us yt equals a times 2 to the power t plus bt times 2 to the power t plus t plus 2. Now, should we do another example? Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> well, guys, thank you for watching. I have plenty more examples. Please subscribe to me to see them more if you want. And as they come. But anyways, have a great day, guys. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Ciao fr from Portugal and big beijinhos. <laughs>